Okay, I think we're good now. Maybe? I don't know. We'll see. Let me know. Sorry, I was trying something different and um, yeah. Okay, let me know. You guys there? Thumbs up, all that good stuff. Yeah, we're good? Are we good, are we good, are we good? Are we good? Okay, we got thumbs up. Okay, good, we're good. All right, I can hear you now, sorry. I was, yeah, woo, yay. Ah, isn't that frustrating when you're trying to do something new and I was trying to use my fancy mic and everything, so I'm probably have to use my mic into my phone and we'll go from there. Uh, yes, hello everybody. Well, hey, Panita, Nanisa, what's not good? Casey Nicholson, Hasehina, Ninanana, Ani, Noani, Nisin, Ninanana, Absalaga, Cree, Bukani, Arapaho, Alaska Native. You think you, what, you know, I mean, I've introduced myself numerous times over over this and you think you'd remember everything. So, um, hello everybody. I just want to say hello to Sherry or Cherie or whatever. Fabian, what up? CB, uh, Sage, uh, Sherry again, Wash Day, uh, Danielle, whoever else is in tuned in. Thank you guys for tuning in for the power hour here. Uh, had a little te technical difficulties at first, but now we're back and, uh, I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to uh, be doing the Power Hour starting, kicking off this week. Uh, from what I understand, we took the weekend off and uh, just kind of let everybody kind of, you know, just kind of relax and enjoy the weekend, not worry about coming on the Power Hour or anything. And um, I know some people probably needed it, um, but uh, sometimes the facilitators and the speakers do need even just that hour break, you know, sometimes. So um, I want to thank uh, um, Indian Collective for sponsoring this as well. Thank you so much, Indian Collective. You guys are awesome. Appreciate each and every one of you, whoever works at Indian Collective. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, again, making this power hour possible for Native Wellness Institute. Two awesome Native programs working together, cooperating, helping each other out, getting the word out for wellness, um, education, and uh, just being, you know, being, being Native. Hey, it's not all about being native, and we all know that. Um, it's all about, I think, um, I, I gave a discussion to um, a yoga class this past Saturday. I was asked to do a yoga pa a class. Not, well, see, the focus was yoga, but then the, the, the organizer brought in speakers just to um, start discussion about change or discussion about the differences in Billings, Montana. So they invited me over there, and I went there. I got there and um, I didn't know what to expect. And all I told myself is I'm gonna speak from the heart. You know, I mean, that's one of the things that we can do is just speak from the heart. And um, so I got up there and I had my thing I wanted to talk about, but sometimes when you get into that moment and you're speaking to a lot of non-natives, especially the yoga people, the people that are there for yoga and not really to hear this Native American, American Indian, First Nations, Indigenous man sit there and talk about them, talk to them, uh, about what is uh, uh, prevalent in the city of Billings and what my experience is. And um, I try not to do the finger pointing game, you know, because we do a lot of the finger pointing game and it's um, not very healthy, you know, because, you know, the whole you got one finger pointing at you and you have three fingers pointing back at you or maybe a big thumb because the thumb's like wickedly curled. And uh, maybe that's why Indians point, you know, like over there, mm, you know, but if their lips are really big, they might like come back and point at them like, I don't know. Anyways, um, yeah, so got there and uh, I just I just honestly spoke from a human, a human being perspective. You know, being a human being, this is what I feel. Not necessarily as a native, you know, I could, I, obviously they know, they see me, they see me as a native, but I really came at it at, at a perspective as a human being. As a human being, this is what I feel. As a human being, this is what I'm trying to work at. As a human being, I'm hoping and wishing, whether you're political or your ideologies or what are beliefs in life, I'm hoping as a human being and human beings, we could come together and uh, quit separating and being apart from each other. But at the same time, deep down inside me, I know who I am. To a point, I guess. And that's part of the talk today. So, uh, 
I want to go through here real quick before I, I get back onto my little kick here, to my little talk here. Uh, hello, Renee. Hello, Rini. Hello, Rini. Uh, Tanya, Rebecca, Terry, Pauline. Hello, Native Wellness Institute. <laughs> um, hello, Sherry. Hello, Teresa. Hello, Janine. Okay, here we go. So let me start off with a little a tunage, a little tune. Okay, and uh, don't look at my don't look at me too too long, all you people out there. Be probably anyways. I won't go there. This is not a comedy hour. <laughs> But it could be, you know, I don't know. Don't you think it's kind of weird just watching somebody's like face play? I feel weird. Like just my face is just there and you guys are just like, there's nothing to stare at but my lips, you know, and my face. Like it's anyways. Okay. Yes, yes, it's actually me playing, in case you guys didn't know. So, story goes, there was this young dude, right? And he was uh, going through life, you know, following everybody's lead. And not knowing exactly what he was doing or how he was going to do it. He just knew that some way, somehow, that whatever anybody's lead was that was successful was his path. And so as he kept going through life, you know, and he was, you know, doing his own thing, he moved all over. He moved all over the country. He did all the things in life that some people don't get to do. And through this moving, um, he kind of started wondering like exactly um, who he was, you know, because as he's moving, he was becoming these people that he was surrounding himself with or the people that surrounded him that he gravitated towards, whether it be a white person, black person, Mexican person, but there was just something about these people that he gravitated towards. And he really didn't know what it was, but he did it anyways. And as he kind of became and got enculturated or immersed into these people's families, into these people's neighborhoods, um, he started taking on a lot of their traits and their beliefs and their ways and not really understanding deep inside what those different traits and those traditions and those ways were. He really didn't know what exactly what it was. And deep down inside, it just felt off. But he kept doing it anyways. He just kept going through life as, you know, just kept kind of more or less coasting in life because at the time it was safe. It, was, it seemed like it was the right thing to do. Mind you, he was a kid. So he was just following everybody's lead and what he thought was the important thing to do. As he started getting older and he started moving more and more, he moved into another area of the country. And in that area of the country, again, he had to prove himself and he had to continue to uh, follow and do what people thought he should do. Um, because that was what society wanted him to do. That was the societal power um, that he felt was the right thing to do, whether it be you know, listening to a certain kind of music, whether it be acting a certain way, whether it be talking a certain way, whether it be uh, carrying yourself in a certain way. This young man, he continued to do these things in life because he felt that it was the way, a certain way to live. One day, his mom told him one day, said, hey, son, we're going to be moving again. And uh, 
The son replied, oh, where are we going this time? Without batting an eye, he was excited about what was going to happen in this next journey of life. And she said, we're moving to the reservation with your, to be closer to your grandma. And the young man said, oh, okay, cool. Even though I'm having the time of my life at this moment in my life right now, because, you know, it's a time where things are changing with my body, with my mind. I'm kind of getting more of a sense of where I want to be, what I want to do. That's what he was telling himself. And he started realizing, well, what, almost there was a sense of anger. Like the, it, was mom's, it was the mom's fault for taking him out of this comfort zone that he was in. And it's going to take him into a, a, a place where, he really didn't know. He spent summers there. He spent summers there with his grandma. He was there during like little uh, events around that certain area. But he really didn't know the area too well. He didn't know the people too well besides some of his relatives. And as uh, they pick, packed up and they started moving across the country into uh, this reservation. He got to this reservation. He looked around. There was no buildings. There was no high sky high sky like skyscraper buildings. There was no uh, immediate stores around the way. There was no big, uh, you know, no haircut places. There was no restaurants um, that were unknown, like no McDonald's, no Wendy's, no Taco Bell, no nothing of that sort in this area. He looked around, he was scratching his head and wondering, what am I going to do here? Found and finding himself like almost mad again. Why am I here? Like we had everything in that city, in that community that we were in before. And now you're, why am I here? Then the, the, the thought came, oh, we're here to be closer to my grandma. And that's what he was saying. I'm here to be closer to my grandma. Knowing that he was a grandma's boy, he accepted the fact that, you know, his grandma needed him or needed to be, he needed to be by his grandma more so than ever because she was getting older. As the time got on, he went to school and he had to prove himself. Um, to these, uh, the reservation, the reservation population. And this reservation population was pretty much comprised of the same people that he was. Um, a lot of the people that, that he was surrounded by looked like him. But the, obviously, this individual, this person, this young boy, young man, didn't talk like them. Because he talked like a city folk. He was uh, maybe considered an apple. Maybe he was considered a wannabe. Maybe he was considered uh, a deviation outside the norm, which was weird. And so he was out there doing his thing, not realizing, you know, what was going on. What was being said behind closed doors, behind uh, hands, as they were pointing and laughing, wondering who he was, what he was trying to be. And as that young boy started kind of getting through um, that, that community, uh, another young man came and said, Hey man, uh, what's going on? How are you doing? Young man replied, I'm doing good. He said, what's your name? And that young, the young boy that just moved from another city said, my name's Casey. And, uh, and lo and behold, from that point on, the journey of being understanding your culture started. And that little story is about me, kind of, sort of, side of, kind of, sort of, in, in summary. Um, I was that young boy, I was that young man. And uh, right when that point started, now, one, that one uh, individual started, he asked me my name, and I said, Casey. There was like a little light that went off in my head, like, Casey, like, that's who I am, you know. And uh, walking through life, you know, I've done that numerous times. You know, someone comes up to you, what's your name? This is what you say. Um, whether you say it in a city voice, what do you say it in... Uh, uh, whether it be West Coast, East Coast, Southern, Jaw, I don't know. Whatever it may be, you say your name. As I started saying my name, I said, my name's Casey. And he started asking me questions. Sorry, I'm asking me questions. Where are you from? And I told him, I'm from Fort Belknap, but I was born in Billings. He's like, oh, that's weird. I've never seen you before. And I'm like, yeah, I just moved from Maryland. And he's like, oh, okay. He's like, is that why you, you know, you're, you got the baggy pants and baggy shirt and a back, backpack? Like, do all those people in Maryland wear backpacks? I'm like, I don't know. Just the school that I was from, I wore a backpack. He said, you kind of talk weird too. And I was like, yeah, I do? He's like, yeah. He's like, uh, um, you can tell you're not from here. And I'm like, but at the same time, I'm like, but I am from here. <laughs> and he's like, um, but uh, so, and I explained to him what I was doing, where I was from, who my family was that I knew at that time. I didn't know all my family. I didn't know all my relations. 
And uh, so I knew some of my family is, oh, I know that person. Oh, I know that last name and all that kind of good stuff. And um, he invited me to play basketball. So we were playing basketball and stuff. And then another young man came up in my life and he said, hey, have you ever been to a sweat? Or no, have you ever been to, have you, do you sing? It was an Indian club in Harlem, Montana, Harlem School, junior, junior, senior high school. And uh, there's Title VII program, I think that's what it was called. Um, they were saying over the intercom, there's drum group practice, blah, blah, blah. So I started getting to know a lot more people. I got into, the, I got that one guy said, did you ever drum before? I'm like, I've never drummed before, ever. No, I never. He's like, well, do, are you interested? Do you know what it is? I'm like, no. He said, well, come on, let's just, let's just go check it out. So I was like, all right, cool. So we went and checked it out. And this is probably about a half a year into the school year, my freshman year. And uh, I went in there and uh, I never really was in that room because, you know, it was an Indian studies room. So I didn't really feel like I was supposed to be in there. I don't know why. That's weird. I know. I know that's weird. And um, opened that door. I got in and there was this drum, this big circular drum and there's chairs around it. And uh, there's some kids already there, you know, and they looked at me and some of them I knew, some of them I didn't know. And Harlem school is really small. So I'm like, it's weird that I didn't know them, but I was just so focused on you know, be trying to be cool. I didn't recognize that there's, you know, these people that actually sing, these other individual students that sing. And there's other, like, there's other ladies in there as well. There's, like, girls that I knew, and there's other girls I didn't know. They were, I think they were working on regalia, or they were beating or something. And uh, so I sat there, and I was really nervous. I was really, really nervous. I didn't know how to feel. Um, they were like, just have a seat, have a seat. And they started handing this bag around, you know, this big, long bag. And they said, just grab something, just grab a stick out of there. I'm like, a stick? You know, like, what? And then I went in there, and it was a big, long stick, you know, a big stick, a drumstick. And I was just like, oh, okay. And they're like, okay. So the instructor was there, and they, you know, he started saying, you know, this is what we're going to do. We're going to start it nice and slow, you know, just drum. And uh, just drum. And the instructor started singing. And when he was singing, I was like, oh, I recognize that type of music. And uh, so he started singing, you know, ah, you know, and I was just like, oh, okay. And then as I was drumming, but I was, my head was nodding like this, and, and, but my drum was like doing like opposite, you know? So I was getting everybody off the drum, like, you know? And, um, you know, and everybody's like trying to like keep in time, you know? Kind of trying to keep in time, right? And uh, I remember that. I remember that really thoroughly, and I liked it. There was something that connected with me on that, you know? And uh, granted, I have nothing against Catholic. Catholicism or Catholic or Christianity or anything that I have nothing against it to each their own I always say um, because at one time I was I was baptized I communion um, heck I was almost to the point where I was almost going to be an altar boy and um, and it's not because um, I I believed in it really it's not really because I, I, I believed in it but I didn't believe in it you know what I mean my mom was teaching me what she knew you know and you only know what you know so I was I was doing that thing right I was there, I was doing it, and realizing, you know, like, through that whole time doing, going through the church stuff, not realizing, or realizing that there was, uh, there was a, 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 a disconnect with me. Um, I didn't really connect with it really much, very well, and it was, it was uh, different. But I did it because my grandma loved it. She loved that religion. She loved the, the, the whole, she said rosary all the time. She said, you know, she prayed to the Bible every morning. And I remember before she started sewing, I remember her saying the rosary or a prayer, you know, and um, to, you know, uh, Jesus and God and Mary and Joseph and whoever else was all up in there. And um, I remember that, you know, so I'm going to do this. And so I'd always go to like, you know, the Easter church and uh, Christmas church or Christmas, uh, the mass, all that stuff. And, but then again, still didn't connect to me. But when I was in around that drum, around that drum, something was happening. And I don't know exactly what it was, but something was happening. Like maybe deep down in my genetics, something was vibing, something was connecting. And I don't know if it was just that, that, or just being around other natives, or just me hitting that drum and trying to sing. Um, but there was something different, and I was feeling it. And I was just like, okay, this is kind of nice. I like this. This is fun. This is more fun than sitting in a church listening to some non-native tell you what the word of God is and telling you how to live and what is right and what is wrong and all these things. That was my experience and I like this way like you know like okay we're learning we're learning life by just sitting around a drum. So simple, you know. And I didn't really start realizing that until I got older and I started reflecting back on my experience at the drum. Eventually we formed a drum group 
And, uh, you know, we started traveling all over the country, all, well, pretty much all over the country, but all over Montana. We were called the Black Bull Juniors, you know, we were kind of a contemporary singer, singers, and um, we traveled all over the, and then we always, I don't know, it was just a kid drum group that I think we, we were pretty decent, you know. We rocked, we rocked a lot of powwows, you know, and it was really, really cool, and it was really, really nice to kind of go through that and witness that and feel that. Then, as I kind of went through and I started grass dancing and I started doing all these things, you know, in, a, in my culture, um, I went to start going to sweats, you know, and uh, again, same thing. My experience with the sweat was totally different as well. Got into a sweat and, you know, hearing people pray, hearing people speak their language, um, kind of just sitting there and just being in that moment um, really connected with me. Again, more so than the, the, the church way, you know, um, there's a lot of laughter, but then there's a lot of like seriousness to it, you know? And so there was that moment of like, okay, we got, okay, I got, I got you. Okay. This is nice. This is nice. And, um, it was hard, you know, because it, it's hot. Sweats are hot. And so I'm sitting there and it's hot. And, um, you know, and it's like, ah, ah, you know, just, ah, the, the, the ears, you know, and the, the back, you know, ah, 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 you know, and you just hear people pray hard, pray hard, you know, and so praying hard, you know, focusing on your prayer. What are you praying there for? And out, you know, being there first time to sweat, all that was focusing on was on the heat. And I'm like, ah, you know, I'm trying to I'm trying to pray hard, ah, you know, just stop. You know, I didn't say that. I just I I toughed through it, <laughs> but um, but going through that, it was it was it was a uh, as an experience. And again, so all that stuff started becoming repetitive. You know, going to powwow, singing, dancing, sweat. <sighs> then I end up leaving the reservation to go pursue my education, my higher education, and going to MSU, Montana State University. And again, you know, kind of, you know, kind of more or less going back and forth, you know, in the in the white way, ending way, you know, going to summer powwows, coming back for school, learning the white way, coming back, learning ending way, you know, all these things, you know, and you just again walking these two roads, you know, and a lot that's a that's a that's a term or that's a, a saying that everybody. A lot of natives will use nowadays is just walking the two roads, you know, because you're you're living in this this supposedly white world, but you're a native and you're trying to you're trying to make sense of the world within these two worlds, and you're trying to be successful, hopefully, in two worlds, and um, that's kind of where um, I'll kind of start a little second part of my presentation too. Is that's that's I think that's where we have to realize. Um, as I was getting older, I, I have to realize I was getting older and I started getting even more immersed into the culture and, um, you know, going through the whole, you know, just trials and tribulations of a young adult, you know, and, uh, you know, things that, you know, you have in your life, not knowing what is, and it wasn't really into my masters or a little bit, maybe after my masters, um, I started questioning who I was, what I was going to do in my life, um, where I was going to go. And at the, uh, and I remember going on a fast and um, I was sitting there and the question really came up was like, who are you? You know, like you're, you got all this time in the world and you got this time for three, four days, you know, to think, to pray. And you think, and you're like, who are you? You know, who are you? And that's the question I would like to pose each and every one of you guys, you know, who are you? Like, who are you? At the end of the day, who are you? Are you, are you, are you, are you Sarah? Are you Paul? Are you Bob? Are you Bill? Are you Tiffany? Are you Karen? Um, who are you? And I think everybody needs to ask them themselves that question because um, it's easy for us to say, uh, my name is Bill. My name is Bob. My name is Sarah, whatever it may be. Um, but when I ask people that question, who are you? I want more in depth of who you are. Because you're more than just Sarah, you know? And maybe Sarah is just an English name in replace of your native name. And maybe you don't have a native name. Maybe you have uh, just a Sarah name. And you are from the Lakota tribe. Or you're from the, the Paiute tribe. Or you're from Navajo country. Or whatever it may be. And you don't have a name. And that's... Again, part of the second part of my, maybe third part of my talk is really understanding who you are. Um, yeah, I go around saying I'm Crazy Casey in my comedy. I say I'm Casey Nicholson with a Master's of Science degree. 
But uh, if someone really asked me who I am, and there's no, no, who are you really? Then I'd say, no, 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 what's not kek? You know, I am, I am White Bear. Um, but they call me Casey Nicholson, but I really am, is my name is Wasnakek. And realizing and taking pride in that, because uh, that's something that no one can ever take away from you. Um, the white, maybe the white people can say, you're no longer Casey Nicholson, we'll call you uh, Philip, Philip something, Philip the Tank, I don't know. Um, um, but that's something that, you, that they, they ask you and you're not realizing, you know, like, oh man, Somebody could take my name, Casey, anytime they wanted. But when you get named and you go through that, that ceremony or whatever it may be of your native name and what it means to carry that name, um, maybe who had that name previously or what the, the person who named you seen before they, they named you, um, whether it be through a vision, a dream, uh, 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 something they saw, uh, something they saw within you, uh, energy of some sort. And... Um, it's more, a little bit more, I guess, more intimate, more meaningful, more, more, more of an integral part of your body or your your whole your whole being when you get that native name. And uh, so, I introduce myself. I say, you know, they they call me Case Nicholson, but my real name is Wasnaka because that's who I am. At the end of the day, that's who I am. Unless I get another native name, then I'll be saying I am Wasnaka, previously also known as. But you know what I mean. But um, Wasnaka, that's my name. And um, I never took pride in that. I never took pride in Casey Nicholson. I never took pride in the things I was going through in my life because at a long time I was lost. And again, the whole the whole thing of this is called um, uh, identity uh, conflict ident or identity conflict, I guess, you know, um, cultural identity conflict. And when I say that, I mean, it could be anything in terms of culture, you know what I mean? In terms of identity, it could be, but there's a conflict with inside yourself, inside you. And you're identifying with something that does not connect with you, that does not resonate with you, does not bring you hope and passion and perseverance and strength. That's what I'm talking about. There's a conflict within that, not giving you that, that oomph to, to life. And when you, don't, when you have that conflict, there has to be something done on your part to, to, to remedy this conflict. And I had this conflict for a long time in my life, not knowing who I was, moving all over the place, not by fault of my own, not by fault of my mother, not by fault of anybody. That was the situation I was in. That's the things I was learning, whether it be, you know, the church way, whether it be moving. And I was, I was blessed. I'm telling you, I was blessed to see all these different types of people, all parts of this country. But at the same time, I don't feel like I was rooted <laughs> into something until I started learning who I was, what I am, what cult, what tribes I am. What does that mean to be Ani? What does that mean to be Bukani? What does that mean to be Absalaga? All these tribes, what does it mean to be native? First nations of this land. What does that mean? And I asked that my, I asked myself that question a lot of times. What does that mean for myself? I don't know. I have to ask questions. I have to, I have to meditate on it. I have to pray about it. I have to try my. I have to try to be better than why what I was yesterday. Is that what I, is that what it means? I don't know. So as I kind of started going through life and realized, you know, when I was in Portland, Oregon, trying to be a white kid, um, I wasn't a white kid. I was I wasn't Caucasian. I was not a white kid. Why am I trying to be like a white kid? Because that's all I knew. That's all I surrounded myself with. That's all my neighborhood comprised of. And I was trying to be like them. And I became like them. I, came, I, I, I got accepted by them. And I became a skateboarder. I listened to rock, even though I didn't like rock. You know, like the heavy metal rock. And I just didn't like it. But I, I just continued to say, you know what? This is good enough. This is okay. Moved to, you know, uh, Gallup, New Mexico. And uh, I became, well, I don't, I can't, you can't say I became Navajo. But I felt like I became a Navajo. Because that's all I hung out with. My name, my, 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 one of my best friends down in, in Gallup was named Key. I can't remember his last name. So obviously he wasn't that best friend, but his name is Key. And we live, you know, in Gallup area and there was this junkyard and we, and we were in a trailer court and I, we go to his house all the time. And we, first time I ever had mutton, you know, was at Key's and heard him speak in Diné or, you know, uh, uh, Navajo and, and just getting immersed into their culture, their family's culture, really. And then we moved again to Aberdeen, South Dakota, majority white people, 
Billings, Montana, majority white people. Uh, we moved to uh, Silver Spring, Maryland. The majority of people that lived in my neighborhood and my school were black. And again, I immersed myself into that culture, that East Coast culture, that Colonel E. Brook Lee Middle School in Silver Spring, Maryland. And I, I, want, I wanted to become them because they were, they were cool. They were the popular kids. And so I, I worked my butt off to like, you know, be their friends and to show them that I was cool. And so as soon as they accepted me, guess what happened? I started acting like them. I started dressing like them, you know. And uh, to me, at that time, I became one of them. And then again, you know, again, I moved to the res and it was a good slap in the face, a good wake up call because as I was saying to my one friend who first asked me, said, who are you? What are you? Where are you from? And, but you're from, but you're, oh, that's why you're, that's why you're different. You're not from here. But at the same time, I was from there, but I wasn't from there. I, I wasn't, I wasn't raised there. I didn't know the language, the culture. I had a conflict within self. Not knowing who I was at the age of 13. I knew I was Grovant. But even then, that is a cultural identity conflict issue as well, right? Because we were not, nece we were not necessarily Grovants. We were actually Ani or whatever other, you know, Rapaho, whatever other things that are out there. Other theories or other stories that are out there. There's so many other things out there, but... Grovant in French means big belly. So a lot of people say, oh, you're Grovant, but that means you're big belly. So that in itself is a cultural identity conflict because you're not big belly. The French told, got things confused and said that you're a big belly to the federal enroller people. So even in that in itself is the conflict. So now you're saying to everybody, I'm Grovant. Ha ha ha. And you're like, and I'm like, wait, 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 wait. Are you really? Like, who are you really? Are you really Grovant? Like, because, I mean, look, at you got like an eight pack. You shouldn't be Grovant. Well, what does it mean? You know, I'm like, it's big belly. It's a French word. It's a French word meaning big belly. They called us big belly. We're not Grovant. What is another word that we call their people? Ani, you know, Wycliffe, Ani Nin, you know, that's what we called ourselves. I didn't know that. But as I started asking questions, I started getting immersed in my language and immersed into my people and uh, starting to know about more about it. Then it started kind of going on to like, well, well, who are you and what are you about? You know, and uh, I think it was one of the most beautiful things is realizing while I was sitting there, you know, on that fast, realizing, you know, this is who I am. This is all I am. I'm never going to be less. I'm never going to be more. At this moment in time, I'm perfect. This is all I can be right now. Is just be connected with Mother Earth, being connected with myself, being connected with everything around me. The sky, the wind, the birds, the deer, whatever may be was around me at that time. And that's who I am. At the end of the day, that's my identity, you know. And at the end of the day, yeah, it could be on E, it could be, you know, what's not kank. But at the end of the day, like I started my talk, was about being that human being that I was talking about to the yoga class at the beginning when I was telling you guys about when I first started. Like a human being. That's it. That's my identity. But to enrich this human beingness, I guess you'd say, what does it create? Who I am? Who am I? What, what kind of human being do I want to be? You know? And I started understanding, man, that is such a journey to kind of find out and put the work in to resolve the conflict of why you're having such an identity issue. Now, the reason I say this and what was really hitting, I was giving a talk to kids one day at a high school. And the thing, and as I was talking, the thing that came up was, but you're not country. And I was like, whoa, I'm onto something. But you're not hip hop. But you're not rock. And all these things kind of started coming up. And I said, do you know your language? Do you know where you come from? Do you know the people that you, that from generations upon generations you come from? Do you know if you have any warriors or spiritual leaders or people of just, you know, of, of great magnitude in your family? I mean, we're, we are all great, but do you know anybody? A lot of the kids look at me and they're like, oh, you know, a lot of them would be uh, um, uh, distracted. You know, they'd be talking to their girlfriend, be talking to their boyfriend, be giggling in front of them. And I'd have to, hey, 
And like louder than that, it'd be like loud, like my Camp Cryer voice, like, hey, you know, like, I'm talking to you. And not only to you, 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 but to all of you, whether you be white, black, Mexican, polka dotted, native, Assiniboine, Nakoda, Lakota, Sioux, Blackfeet, Crow, Arapaho, all of you. Do you know who you are? I got their attention. I, we need to you, we, you, us, adults, right now, need your help, kids. We need to know who you are. We, to, we need you to know who you are. Because you are our future. You're going to be carrying on our ways. And if you're conflicted with being, being black because that's all you know about, you know more lyrics about a hip-hop song than you know about your own language. You know more lyrics about George Strait or, or the Dixie Chicks or whatever than you know about your own language. You know more dance moves. I don't know. I don't know. Those TikTok moves or Fortnite moves or whatever these kids do nowadays. You know more of those moves than you know more about the traditional moves in your, in your traditional dances. You know more about all those other things about society that is showing you than you know more about who you are, about the people you come from, the languages that we spoke, the traditions and ceremonies that we conduct. Time and time, again, when we go to ceremonies or these different gatherings, we pray that our youth carry on our ways and our traditions. But yet we are fighting a battle with the conflict identity issues, the cultural conflict identity issues, because... They are losing touch with who they are. They are floating and just gravitating what, to what's coolest, to what's easiest. And it sucks because you know why? I was that person. I gravitated to what was easiest. What was, what was the less uh, abrasive? What was, what was just the, what, I, what, what I knew? I never challenged myself enough. To get to that point of like, this is who I am, but now I am. Do I need to work harder? Heck yes. You know what the conflict identity issue with me is? My language. You know, and I, I sometimes our, 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 um, our spiritual leaders will be naming people sometimes at the Sundance. And I'm a, I'm a camp, crier for, uh, camp crier for the Sundance sometimes, you know, depending if they ask and stuff. But I sit there and then they'll be saying the language. This is what I'm going to name this person. And as a camp crier, I'm supposed to cry it out with everybody. And they were supposed to repeat it four times. And but they, they, tell me a na- they tell me a word that I don't know. And if you say it wrong, you're probably saying it wrong. Obviously, you're saying it wrong. But you're saying something different, maybe, possibly. So I hesitate on saying it because I'm really not sure how to say it. So there's a conflict identity. There's a cultural conflict. There's a, there's a conflict with me right there. Like what is stopping me from learning my language more? Nothing. Nothing at all. There's a conflict right there that I can solve. This whole COVID thing, this isolation, this, this, this time away from people and gigs and everything and less traveling, I have all the time to be learning my language. But what am I doing? Golfing. <laughs> uh, no, I'm not golfing. But I do golf a lot. But I'm not learning my language as much as I should. I have excuses. I have laziness. I have poor work ethic in terms of learning my language. I have lack of focus. I have a lack of listening. And those are some big things that we need to admit to ourselves sometimes. And to understand that's the conflict. Sometimes we get lazy. Sometimes it's just easier to follow the whole societal movement of America to do what they want us to do versus what we inside of us really want to do. To find that connection that's going to resonate deep within our freaking souls or our spirits so that it can go last for generations and generations. Because if I get lazy... And if I start following societal norms of the westernized culture, I lose the ability to teach my people, my sons, my family, 
my my children, my great grand my grandchildren, if I'm lucky enough, great grandchildren. It's just not about now, you know. And at the time, I thought it was. It's not just about now. It's about generations of beyond us. And if we're lazy now, that sets the precedence or that sets a movement into tomorrow. Where we're when our kid asks you, how do you say I love you in our language? Because you could say I love you, I love you. But when you say it in the language of our old people that said it for years and generations and thousands of years, there's something inside that language that resonates within your spirit that has a deeper, in my opinion, a deeper connection with saying that word to that your son or your daughter or your great or your grandchildren or your mom, or your dad, or your family members, or to maybe even a stranger that you just had a conflict with. When you say, instead of saying, you know, you're just conflicting with each other, blah, 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 then you think, oh, they're just a human being. They're having a hard time in life. I'm a human being. I'm having a hard time in life. Need be thought, Dan. Huh? It's okay, good. We'll see you later. But they didn't realize. They just told them I love you. Told that person I was having an argument with. I love you. In my language. Maybe they thought I said something derogatory or mean. But when you say that to your son, your family members, need be thought, Dan. Need be thought, Dan, Neha. Need be go. Good night. Go to sleep. Love you. Like when you say stuff like that, there's something inside you. There's that. I think that you're battling that conflict instead of saying good night, I love you in a, in, in a, in a westernized uh, tongue. English tongue, you say it in your own language. And those, those are some of the words I just first learned. And so I'm chipping away at that conflict. I'm chipping away at where I want to be in life as I get older. Because guess what? We're not promised to tomorrow. We're not. And so each day I try and I try to become better than what I was yesterday. I'm going to have those little dips where I'm like, oh, I'm good. And then I come down, oh. And then come back, oh, I'm good, I'm good. And then hopefully it just kind of goes like this, up, 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 more up, you know, than down. Because I think the more I know who I am and where I want to be with self, with my identity, with, with understanding my culture, my language, who I am, the more happier I will be. The more productive I will be. The more focused I will be. It's, it's a beautiful thing. I, one day, and I'm hoping I learn my language where I'm actually have to. I can carry a freaking conversation on with my sons. Whether it be, hey, good morning, you better go get yourself some toast and uh, feed, and uh, go go cut the grass, or go walk the dog, or go run your mile, or whatever in our native tongue. At the same time, smudging up every morning and praying with your your loved ones, your son. Your sons, your daughter, your, your, your wife, your companion, your husband, whoever it may be. Sitting in sweats, you know, beating your, your designs on your powwow regalia. Saying a prayer in your, native t- in your native tongue or your native language. We can do that. That helps us understand and gets past that conflict of identity because like I said, we are battling the, 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 the mainstream media, the mainstream music. The mainstream things that are out there. And that's what all our people gravitate towards too. A lot of us will know more about those, those things. A lot of us know more about that stuff than we know about our own ways. It's sad. But yet I do have hope and I have prayer that one day we will start reversing the tide and put that stuff away. For the time being, for at least two, three hours. And, and just study our ways. And isn't that weird that we have to study our own ways? Again, cultural identity conflict. We have to study our own ways. Because we've been so immersed into the Western society ways. That's a conflict. Because we are not them. We are not European. We are not, we are not hip-hop. We are not country we are not black. We are not, well, I am not black. I should say, tell myself that. I am not black. I am not 
Mexican. I am not white. There might be a little white, but I don't know. I'm already, I'm already paying homage to my white side, maybe, because I'm speaking the language, you know, and I got this house and I'm mowing the lawn. I don't know. I don't know what it means to be white. I don't know their culture. I don't. I know some of my culture, though. And I, I, I just want to be, I just want to be better. And I hope a lot of you guys listening today will try to do that. Will try to be better for yourselves and your family. It's a, it's a conflict that, again, like I can't stress enough that we need to try harder about. We need to try harder on. As much as we want to stand up for the, 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 the rights and the, 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 the hard things in life, you know, that's going on to today's society. I honestly think we should sometimes put that much oomph, that much energy into learning our own culture and our own ways. When we're sitting in there and we're like fighting for a rah, man, it's beautiful. But at the same time, you're going to go back home and what? Hopefully you're paying, play, praying in your language, singing your songs. I don't know if you are or not, but I think we should put that same amount of energy into our own right, into our own being, into our own wellness, into our own spirits, you know. A lot of our people's spirits are hurting. I don't know if you know that and I understand, understand that. But a lot of our people are hurting. And I attribute to, and I am no scientist. I'm, I am no better than anybody else. This is just from observation, going around the country, speaking, doing comedy, visiting with the youth, visiting with elders. This is just from my perspective. A lot of our people are hurting. A lot of our youth are hurting. A lot of our elders are hurting. Because of this thing that we call cultural identity conflict. We are becoming lost. We are becoming uprooted. We are not digging our roots down into Mother Earth or down into our language or our beliefs or our traditions. We're just kind of floating and just say, oh, this is good enough. Oh, this is good enough. Uh, this will give me just by. Um, um, what did my language ever do to, for me? What did my culture ever do for me? You know, I don't know. Maybe there's some, some people that are resentful. I don't know. I really don't know. But in my opinion... This, this culture identity conflict is one of the main reasons why a lot of our people are lost and why they're hurting and maybe why some of them are taking their lives. Because at the end of the day, maybe they just don't know who they are. And they don't feel good enough about who they are to continue in this world. To say, I am good enough. I am great enough. I am well enough. To continue tomorrow to make my day better than it was yesterday. Some people are just so lost because they don't have that connection with culture. Their own culture, their own language, their own beliefs, their own traditions. They just say, you know what? I'm done. And they go. And we're all left scratching our heads. But why? What did, what, what did we do wrong? Why did they have to go? Like I said, sometimes we just don't put enough energy into learning our own traditions, cultures, and language because it's so easy to follow the westernized culture. It's easy. It's there. It's, it's convenient. It's instant gratification. It's there. So um, understanding that, I, I, I really hope and wish that we continue to work on this culture identity conflict issue. Because of me, I have a lot of work to do. Even though, you know, I might be part of some, some uh, organizations that really, you know, contribute being well and they want me to speak and motivational speak and do these things. I am well, I am healthy, I'm happy, I'm love, but I'm only human being and I have work to do. Each day I have work to do. Each day I want to be better than I was yesterday. And maybe within this, I should be able to learn a, a, a word each and every time so that I can string, string together a, a sentence or a paragraph or a story. Maybe one day, I can tell you all this in my language and I can have an interpreter tell you this. That would be nice. But I'm speaking English. That in itself is a conflict. <laughs> 
And we all only understand English. And a lot of us may not be at all English or white. Yet we speak it. Yet we follow it. Yet we live it. Yet we're proud of it. But yet, that's not even who we are. We're not that. We're not Western. We're not them. As as Indian man, native man, uh, indigenous man, Ani, Ani Nen. You know, or Apakani, or Absalaga. I mean, I could go to any of those tribes I'm a part of because I know family in all those. And I can immerse myself into our ways, some way, somehow. But yeah, it just uh, makes me, it makes, hopefully it makes each and every one of you guys think about who you want to be, where you want to be in life, what kind of goals you want to attain, you know, be, beyond education, beyond getting a raise. Let's kind of start looking inward as in terms of being a human being, in terms of being First Nations or Indigenous, or it doesn't even have to be that. But knowing your African culture, knowing your Scottish culture, knowing your uh, uh, Maori culture, whatever it may be, whoever's listening to this, we have to do better, we have to be better. And we have to quit being okay with just being okay. It's one of the things I always promote in all the things I talk about. We just have to quit being okay with just being okay because our people have struggled and sacrificed too much for us to just sit back and say, you know what, I'm going to take the easy route out. Thank you, great grandmas and great grandpas for all the sacrifice and the hardships you went through for us to be here today. But you know what, I'm just going to take the easy way out. I'm pretty sure right when they're saying, no, I don't want to do this. I'm not going to follow this. I'm not going to learn your ways. I'm not going to do all these things and I'm going to, you can kill me for all I care. This is for my people. I'm pretty sure as they're taking their last breath, they didn't say, you know what? Ah, geez, I hope my people in the future take the easy route out and just follow, you know, the system status quo. They did it because they want our ways to survive. They did it because they want our language to survive. They did it because they want our ceremonies to survive. They didn't do it thinking, oh, they're just going to, oh, they'll be fine. We're, we're, we'll be good. Because once we lose our language, our ceremonies, our traditions, we, I feel like we no longer become indigenous. We, don't, we, don't, we, we lose that. We lose some part of that. We lose part of ourselves and who we are as a people. We lose our whole, in my opinion. So I feel in deep down inside me, we have to really try harder and quit being okay with just being okay. We have to. I'm not trying to tell you what to do or how to live your life. But we just have to <laughs> take it or leave it. Our people deserve it. Our, our youth deserve it. Our adolescents, those people that are suicidal ideation right now, thinking that they want to take their lives right now, they deserve to know who they are and to know where they come from and to know their language and their cultures and traditions and their beliefs. They need to know that. We need to know that. I, if I want to personalize it, I need to know that. So, uh, a little bit more deeper than we usually go. <laughs> but uh, nonetheless, the cultural identity conflict really, really, really needs to be discussed. Sit down with your kids and just ask them who they think they are. And they will tell you. I don't know. If they say that, we have a lot of work to do. Believe it. If they don't know who they are, we need to start working on them. If you're... If your, your, your sister or your brother, or your uncle, any of your family members, and you ask them, who are you? And they say, I don't know. That's a good question. We need to do work. Because there is a conflict with, them, with their identity. Because if they don't know who they are, they're going to struggle. We, do know, we need to know who we are and where we come from and what we want to do in our lives. Cultural identity conflict needs to be discussed. So have a discussion with your families tonight. Have a discussion with yourself today. Write it down in a journal. Call up somebody. Have a FaceTime with somebody. Say, I heard this one speaker on Native Wellness Institute Power Hour this week, which was funded by Indian Collective. His name was Casey Nicholson, but his name really wasn't Casey Nicholson. It was Wasnokek. 
That's what he called himself. He said, off the information and off the knowledge based off all of his other people that he's learned from, he said to ask you, who are you? So grandma, grandpa, sister, dad, mom, cousin, boyfriend, girlfriend, wife, husband, do you know who you are? And then we'll see what they say. Then you can say, well, I thought you were part Kiowa. I thought you were part Cherokee. What does that mean? I thought you were a crow. What does that mean? I thought you were a Cree. What does that mean? Kunal, I thought, what does that mean? Macaw, what does that mean? And see if they can tell you. Because it's one thing to say you're, you're this, but under that, what does that mean? Wahe Panita, Nanisa, Wahe Nitai, Wahe Niti, Wahe Da, Nanisa, what's not care? Case Nicholson, Hasehina, Ninana Aani. What does that mean? Then I would tell you, from my perspective, this is what it means for me. Brrr, and we can have a conversation about it. So, I think it's almost time. I'll play you this last song and I'll go. I'm, I just went over a little bit more than the power because we had some technical difficulties. I'll play you this last song and I hope and wish nothing but the best for each and every one of you guys. You guys are beautiful. You guys are great. You guys are awesome. Uh, who? That's all I have for today. And I hope each and every one of you again have, has, does, whatever, has a good life and challenge yourselves each and every day to become better than what you were yesterday. Deal with the cultural identity conflict issues. Ask a hard question to you and your family members. Write it down, read about it, get educated about it, learn your language, know your culture, know your ceremonies, get rooted, and let's protect our ways and our way of life. To each and every one of you, ni uh, be thought, Dan. I love you, and uh, uh, yeah, take care, you guys. We'll see you guys later. Until next time, on the hub, man.